Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. We're here in American Truck Simulator and if you haven't recognized that intro, it is an intro for a YouTube channel that's hosted by Chuck, who is a LTL driver for Estes Express. That's why we have the garage suited up appropriately. Uh, Chuck does a lot of... Uh, a lot of P&D work, a lot of line haul work. We're actually going to kind of do a tribute here to Chuck and his pickup and delivery work. I did a video probably about six months ago that featured, tried to feature as much as I could pickup and delivery, just like Chuck likes to do. Um, but the problem was we were in another state. We have Oklahoma now, and Chuck is based out of Tulsa. So guess where we are? We're in Tulsa. I'm going to do a little bit of pickup and delivery. I showed up to the yard about 5.30. We got everything sorted out. And so basically what happens is I have my truck that I always drive in. And then I show up to the yard. I go grab my truck. And they tell me where to go get my trailer. I've already hooked it up. I'm ready to get going. They've already filled it with a bunch of loads. And what pickup and delivery is essentially... It's not really simulated in this game. We gotta fake it. We gotta RP it a little bit. But I have the trailer full of stuff, and I'm gonna be dropping it off at, in this case, three different places. And I'm just gonna drop off a couple pallets here, a couple pallets there. And then once the trailer is empty, then I'm gonna start my pickups. And the idea is once I get that trailer full or I'm fi uh, finished with my pickups that the uh, office has me going through, then I'll head back, head back to the yard at the end of the day and they'll take whatever's in my trailer, combine it with what's in other trailers, and then we'll take it more on like line haul routes, uh, maybe to Houston or Dallas or San Antonio or Memphis or wherever else. But we're just doing local stuff today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're in the Volvo VNL. We have a DD13, or no, I'm sorry, we have a Volvo 13 in here. 10 speed transmission, just like Chuck would run. I'll tell you a little bit more about Chuck's channel and the RP as we get going, but we are headed out on our first delivery. We have a 53 foot van branded in Estes. And it looks really good with this custom yard. I'm going to leave a link down below to the yard. It's done really well. And really helps with the RP. So where are we going here? I think we're going off to the left first. Ooh, brakes are really sensitive. That's good. Looks like they uh, they keep them tuned. Chuck, Chuck always says he's got really good uh, support on his team. And they're always willing to fix up the truck and get it get it done quick so he can get back out on the road and make those deliveries. Um, so Chuck's channel, Trucking Through Life, you just definitely need to take a look at it. Gives you a really good idea of what it's like to be an LTL driver. Whether you're going to do local uh, pickup and delivery work or you're going to do more line haul stuff. Uh, and Chuck's done both. really gives you a neat little insight into how everything gets carted around the country from place to place and as efficiently as possible. Yards, turn left. Of course I got Lori on board with me. She's going to help make this uh, pickup and delivery work a lot easier. So normally what Chuck would do is he would be going off to probably anywhere between what, seven to ten different places to do his drop-offs until his trailer is empty, then he might do anywhere between six to ten pickups. Now, I don't want to make this like an hour-long video, so the way I've organized it is we've got three drop-offs and three pickups, and one of them is actually a drop-off and pickup in the same spot, so we're going to go to a total of five different places. And, oh, that sunrise is really great, looking out over the Tulsa skyline like it. Um, three places are concentrated kind of in the same area. Um, as you can see there, it says 50 minutes game time, but it's going to be still on the outskirts of Tulsa. We are remaining in the city. 
Um, so three, yeah, three places are concentrated together where we're going to do the drop-offs. The third spot that I go to is also going to be a pickup. And then we're going to go do two more pickups that are concentrated, that are real close to each other, concentrated in another area, which is actually closer to the yard. So we'll end up with those closer to the yard uh, and just head back to the yard to so that they can concentrate all of their stuff. Looks like we're still going straight here. Oh, and we're going a little bit fast. That's okay. Um, normally that wouldn't be displayed. Let's get rid of that because Chuck always drives safe. <laughs> Um, yeah. Shout out to, uh, to Chuck, though. If for whatever reason he ever sees this video, um, and that's about a 2% chance. Um, hopefully I'm doing it justice. I am trying to bring people over to your channel and, uh, try to share with more people what you're doing. Yeah, see, we weren't on the highway that long. We just got to get over to this other area of Tulsa. After 100 yards, turn left. How are you guys liking Oklahoma, by the way? Have you guys checked out all the cities? You guys still have uh, a checklist of things that you need to see? What's your overall impression? Uh, I know a lot of people were were really excited about it. Uh, I don't know if it's if SCS has met all of your expectations or if you're still looking for more stuff. You know, kind of going around the map, what I've done is I've actually I've driven around or flown around pretty much every part of Tulsa. And my goal wasn't to hit too many places that are actual job pickups as designated by the game. I'm actually trying to find more local places and all the places that they'll actually allow you access into driveways because a lot of Chuck's work is he's going to smaller businesses. And if you think about it, it's kind of like uh, UPS or, or FedEx or anything like that, except Estes Express is really focused a lot more on the commercial side of things. So you're not going to be delivering to homes. It's going to be to small businesses. And I didn't want to pick out like your stereotypical like Home Depot and waste management and... You know, what else do we have? Uh, I think designated jobs here. Yeah, there's a Target. Um, rather than hit a lot of those places, oh, there's a Walmart too. I'd rather just focus on hitting some smaller businesses, things that Chuck would normally be going to. Some of them don't even have names on the buildings, which is fine because all I really need to know is what kind of place I'm going to. And Chuck wouldn't mention their names anyway because he would keep that kind of confidential makes makes sense um, but to give you a little bit of update um, Chuck has kind of been out of the video game for like the la uh, video game the video game for the last uh, probably eight months now um, and he did post that he's doing fine he actually transferred over from the pickup and delivery part of Estes, and he's doing the line haul stuff. So he's doing more of the longer runs, things that when multiple P&D drivers bring a whole bunch of stuff back uh, from their local pickups, it'll all get assembled and all head off to El Paso or Houston or Dallas or Memphis or any place like that. So he's doing more of the line haul work where he's uh, leaving Monday, headed back Friday, and try to pick up as many of these uh, drop-offs that he can and they're longer longer drives but apparently what he was saying is he's not doing a whole lot more videos right now because I think there's a there's been a change in policy at Estes and they're saying that they don't want him to be doing any more videos I don't know if there was anything confidential that got leaked out or what the situation is but if you check out his channel, you'll see he hasn't posted in about eight months. But he's got like three years of uh, videos pulled together. Everything you could possibly think of, of what's involved in P&D work, line haul work. And so there's really a lot to learn, even though he's not uh, putting out, uh, even though he's not putting out this uh any new content. I hope in the future that he's going to put out some more content to kind of give us an insight 
on the changes that have been made at Estes. That would be pretty cool. And we're going through a little checkpoint here. I don't know if Chuck would be doing this. I don't know if he delivers to, like, airports and, you know, private security places. Maybe he does. He just doesn't list those on the video for obvious reasons. But we are headed. So our first drop-off, let me take a look at it. We've actually got... It's actually going to be a machine shop. We're dropping off some, like, chains and brackets and all that kind of thing. It's up here on the right, actually. The Walmart's off in the distance, but we're not going that far. Yeah, so this is the Tull Supports, and there are actually jobs to be picked up here both at the port and at the Walmart, but we're actually focused on this building right here. We're going to take a little bit wide. And I think, yeah. So what we're probably going to do is be dropping off closer to where this forklift is, since they don't have a dock here. And so we'll just pull up make it accessible so that forklift can just go ahead and empty out what it needs on the trailer it's what we have for them is on the very back since they're the first stop so let me go ahead and get that delivered and I'll be right back all right we got that one dropped off so we are headed to the next one where are we headed we are headed to it's an, it is a bus manufacturer here in the city of Tulsa, and we are dropping off, we've got, oh yeah, we've got five pallets, various uh, bus accessories, and a few transmissions, so apparently they're overhauling part of the fleet. And we'll get that over to them so that they can uh, get back to doing what they're doing be nice if they had a dock somewhere but oh they do have a dock over there actually maybe that's where they do their outgoing their outbound stuff but they always just say that they'll take it off with a forklift whenever I drop off over here it's kind of a local spot on my regular route go after this guy So we're trying to do this thing as realistic as possible like Chuck would have done. That's why we've got the 53 foot van. When he does the line haul work going from like, you know, interstate work, then that's more of they're usually carrying like double pups. And it usually just ends up being that way because we might go down to like, um, we might be taking it down to the uh, terminal down in Dallas and then from there they're going to separate one of those trailers and one of those trailers is going to go directly onto San Antonio and the other one is going to go off to Memphis. So keeping everything bundled into smaller trailers so that they can be sent easier down the chain and get to their destination is kind of the, the whole thing. But local work we're doing, got a 53 foot van. So this bus manufacturer is actually not too far down here. Like I said, these first three drop-offs are pretty much concentrated in the same area. Make it efficient. Get a look at the truck and trailer skins. Fit it out with the uh, red rims as well. Match the branding. And Volvo is what Chuck drives. Occasionally I see him... Uh, I, will, I will go ahead and see him in a... Uh, an international every now and then, and he was even in a, a small little freight liner uh, for right. at least one video. Yards, turn right. But for the most part, he's got his assigned Volvo, and he's turn usually right. in that truck all week. He's got kind of his assigned gig. That's kind of cool. 
So we do actually have to go through another checkpoint to get in here for this bus manufacturer. That man, they got a lot of them. They got a lot of them. Should be making a few more drop-offs to this place, as they're uh, they've got a lot to maintain. And obviously, these are looking like school buses, so pretty crucial that we get them back out on the road as quick as possible. So let's see. Got. You see, let me stop here just for a second. Look at the gate number. Okay, so according to the paperwork, they're looking at all of their drop-offs are in bays one through three. So let's see what they have available. I'm assuming it's just right over here. You know what? I have been over here one time, and pickup was actually at these doors over here these red doors but since we're dropping off let's see if we can go into one two or three they obviously haven't unloaded this one that's at two let's go ahead and go three or no let's go one let's see if we can back her into bay number one got the four ways on let's get the windows down give them a honk so they know we're coming back and put it reverse. Got the tandem slid forward on the trailer, so we got a pretty good turning capability on this. So I don't have to fling the trail the fling the tractor all the way over like that. Let's see if we can do Chuck Proud on this one. Not bad, not bad. Lining it up. Man, Chuck would be doing this so much faster. Let's see how we're looking on the right. Got it. Yep. Oh, hit it a little bit harder than Chuck would have. But let me go ahead and get these uh, transmissions and accessories dropped off, and I'll be right back. All right, we are good to go. Now this place is actually, for those uh, in the real world, this is actually a pick up and drop off spot in the game. We're just role playing a little bit today. So I don't actually, I'm not actually getting actual jobs. Oh, we're on a little bit of an incline there. But this one is called IC Bus, and it is a new company that was introduced for Oklahoma. Man, they got a lot of buses. Doing a lot of a lot of manufacturing over here. So we are actually headed over to a, another manufacturer at an airport. Let me get these four ways off. Oh, got a KFC trailer over here. Wonder if that guy's just stopping for lunch. go through our security check I'm making sure we're not stealing anything out of here is that what's going on security check coming out I don't know so I've been here a couple times various places at the airport I don't know if they've got us going to the actual docks or anything but uh, this is gonna be our third drop-off and it's gonna be our first pickup so we'll go ahead and drop off first obviously we want an empty trailer before we actually do these pickups. Oop, missed that one. it here no this is just the this is just the northern portion of the uh, of IC bus this is where we're gonna hit our airport I believe yep this is it Tulsa Airport 
So I'm sure we're going to have another security. Man, we haven't gone, we haven't done any deliveries without going through some sort of security pass so far. Well, figures. Going to an airport, going to a port. Where's our stop? Oh, we're not actually, I guess we're just simulating that. Yep, just dropping off some stuff here. I'll be out in a second. Guy doesn't seem to be too talkative. But this is kind of cool. We get to see a little bit more of the Tulsa area in detail. It is the back of the uh, back of the bus manufacturer. Airport over there on the right, runway and everything. I'm going to get in here. Probably going to pull over here on the side and finalize exactly where they want us to go. I've actually picked up uh, some stuff here, just short of the main docks. Let me see where they have us going. Let me check in. Just a second. Okay, so it looks like we're actually headed... We're actually headed in to the... Probably it's going to be the actual docks. Hopefully there's someone else up here that can give me a little bit more direction. So I can check in. But we are dropping off five pallets here. And this is uh, various home goods and small appliances. Wherever it may be headed out of this airport. Probably slow down a little bit. Keep it at about 20 right now. They'll probably even have us reduce that. Yeah, especially as we're coming in here. Okay, good. There's a little guard gate here. Let me check in with the guy. Yeah, this is their receiving. Perfect. We'll check in with the guy and see what he wants to do, what bay we're going into. I'll be right back. Hey, how you doing? All right. So, talk to the guy. Really nice guy. We're actually headed into S7, and that is toward the end there on the right. Ooh, that's a long low boy. Let's see where S7 is here on the right. S9, S8. Okay. It's that that little block right there. It's the one on the right. So, since I've got room over here, I'm going to make use of it. No sense in doing a blind back when I can just make a U-turn here and get set up for a good setup. That's what Chuck always says. It's not always about your skills and backing, although it helps and comes with experience. It's really how you set up. Set up is the whole key here. Looks like we're aimed pretty good. Reverse. Hit the horn so they know we're coming back. Straighten it out a little bit. Turned a little early. Slow down a little bit. Don't need to be coming in at 20 miles an hour. Yeah, we definitely cut that a little bit early. Might have to do a pull-up. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Sorry, Chuck. Go ahead and snake back a little bit. There we go. Nothing wrong with a little, uh, little pull-up every now and then. Need to keep practicing. It's kind of good. We got lines here. In our next two spots, I don't think we're going to have any lines, so we're going to have to kind of make it work ourselves. I'm moving the wheel way too much. Well, we got a little bit more room to go back, so let's straighten her out. Straighten out the cab. We're looking good left and right. And there we go. Let me get her dropped off here. And again, yeah, we're dropping off uh, 
home goods, small appliances, five pallets. We'll be right back. All right, we got that one dropped off. And they actually went ahead and loaded us up here. Remember, this is the spot where we were dropping off and picking up. So we just picked up four more pallets, uh, small office furniture and supplies. So that'll be our first pickup. We got two other ones. Uh, these first three deliveries that I just did, they're all, remember, located kind of in the same area. And now we're gonna head back toward the yard. It's a little bit more of a drive, but our last two will be really close to each other and close to the yard. So, um, like I said, the last place that we went to, the IC bus place, that is an actual pickup spot for the game. So is the airport. I just didn't actually go ahead and check into it. And the next two that we go to are smaller places. They are not actual job pickup or drop off locations. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from like Walmart and Target and big commercial stuff. He he goes to smaller places, like mom and pop places, small businesses. So uh, there's a lot of closed off roads here, and but there's development. If you look on the streets that you can't go through, there's still a lot of development and buildings, which leads me to believe that they are going to be adding on to this, which is very promising. And that's obviously something that SCS has done in the past as they've gone along, even after they've introduced new states. They keep adding on developing, whether it's changing, um, you know, changing the animations or the graphics to something or adding new places into it to give you a little bit more immersion. SCS is usually pretty good at doing that. So I'm, I have no doubt, like access to all these shops and stuff, that'll probably be happening pretty soon or when, on their next update. Headed back into Tulsa proper here. We've got all the big buildings. University's right off here on the left. It's a red building. I looked at that. I was hope, hoping that there would be a drop-off spot for it, but I, I didn't find one. All the streets and everything nearby were all blocked off. And we're getting even further over, huh? I don't know. I think they're going to want us to stay to the right. Lori, what you got to say here? Keep right. After 50 yards, turn right. Turn right here? Nope, that's a blocked road. See, that's right. that's kind of deceiving. Because there was a right there. They should have held off on those instructions a little bit. Come on, Lori. Especially when you have a big interchange here. Of course, if this was Chuck, Chuck already knows the all the highways and he wouldn't be confused but I've only been through here three or four times so far need to drive in each little area quite a bit to start familiarizing yourself probably getting off the freeway here pretty close uh, that big manufacturing place off to the right that I'm looking at that's the Dow Chemical you can take and get jobs in and out of that and the garage, which is kind of what I'm looking at right under the uh, right under this Southwest Boulevard sign right now, that's where the garage is. We've got a couple delivery or a couple pickups to make still. Let's get the wipers on since we're getting a little bit of rain. There's the garage straight ahead, so we won't be too far away at all. Looking into this, this one doesn't actually. Turn right. 
I didn't know what to bring, you know, deliver or take from here. I think it says it's like analytics and something on this sign. Let me stop here real quick. Statistical analysis, data reconfiguration. I didn't know what I was going to be able to deliver there. But they do, this parking lot here is actually accessible if you want to drive into it. Um, that little shopping center is not accessible, so I was going to deliver to a small business in there, but that didn't happen, and a lot of these places are blocked off. But there is a place up here on the right that I'm going to pull into, and since we're uh, on the pickup side of things, they usually don't go, so it's right up here on the right where you see some of these bays. Those bays, uh, I do a lot with delivery, but for pickup, I actually want us to go in on the far side of the building as I'm going to show you. Right. Just kind of put it here into the uh, into the center lane. So I would like to be able to go into there. The reality, as soon as you drive over towards those cars or that purple truck, it's all blocked off. It's you can't get into it. So what I'm going to do is I actually want to get in on the back side of the building. So here's what I'm going to do. Go straight. I'm going to role play that there would actually be another driveway here because there's no other way to get in there since I'm with a 53 footer. There is no way to actually get the trailer turned around because you'd hit those barriers too early. See if I can get in here without slamming into a, another car. Barely have enough room as is, and we're just hanging out in traffic. Let's see if we can start turning there now. There we go. That'll work. It's nice to have a day cab. Still need to turn a little bit to the right. That'll work. Let's pretend this is a driveway. You know, most of these places, Chuck sets himself up pretty good. He does a little bit of research before he gets there, so he doesn't have to let cars be hanging out in the waiting for traffic for a long time. Either that or the ones that he does do that, and sometimes he can't avoid it. He just doesn't show those, which is fine. It just kind of slows down the video. All he's trying to do is inform you what it's like to be a PMD driver, so that looks pretty good right there. They're just going to bring out a forklift and unload it here, right at this, right through this door. Get her all straightened up. Let me go in, see what they have for me to pick up, and I'll be right back. Alright, so this is a brake manufacturer. So we actually picked up two pallets of disc brakes and calipers that we're going to be headed back to the... Uh, yard with but we do have one more stop and we're actually going to a plastics manufacturer and it's actually right down the street here let's just go out the main driveway here so yeah if I go any further than what would be necessary for me to turn out this driveway then I'll hit a an invisible roadblock but it's cool they've got some bays there maybe they're gonna put in another business and make that a pickup and drop off spot So up here is the uh, waste management, but I'm actually going to make a shortcut because I was exploring some of these roads earlier and I found out that you can actually go down this road and the back road as well. That's why if you look up there on the GPS, you'll see that it's kind of a dashed line. It's kind of a hidden road. It's not blocked off. And the manufacturer here is actually just straight ahead. We got a few... Uh, few tankers in there and usually what I do for this place is I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up kinda where that gate guard is uh, where that guard gate is um, rather than come over here they want me to pull in a little bit further and they're gonna come out they may come out into this bay but they just come out with a forklift for this one so this is a plastics manufacturer and we are picking up uh, we only have two pallets today. No. 
sorry, that's three pallets. We got three pallets of various plastic goods. Um, it's I, I don't have any more information on that. I don't know how much is, of it is uh, security. So anyway, let me go in and see what they want to load up. Okay, yep, so got those three pallets. I have no idea what's on them. They won't tell me, and I'm not supposed to ask. Now, the question is, can we actually get out down here? I think it's just that crossroad where you can't get out, but I think there's another driveway up here. That'd be great. No, kind of take you by waste management as well. And thank God you can't smell that. Not on video. Not yet, anyway. And AI trucks do drive down that road a lot, so I am... But there's the entrance to the waste management. Drive around to the left, make another left, and kind of, you know, lower areas where they have all their bays. Turn right. Yeah, so there's a lot of roads blocked off, but... They still have some development, which is kind of cool. I mean, I know they don't want to just seem like it's the end of the map there. But I'm curious to see how many other things they're going to add on to these areas that are blocked off right now that could be future drop-off and pickup areas. So we are done. That was our last pickup. We did three deliveries, three pickups. And we are headed back to the yard right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Consider hitting subscribe and hitting the no notification bell so you can see all my videos. But quick little, uh, quick little tribute to Chuck and his work as a P&D driver with Estes Express. Hopefully, maybe in the future, he's going to come back to P&D for a little bit. We'll see some more videos if it's if the company's going to permit that. Actually, we're going to go straight here. Either way, we'd like to hear from him, see how he's doing with uh, line haul work. And, yeah, I mean, over the last three years, he's been posting pretty regularly. So to see him go eight months without posting, hopefully everything's still good with him. But we're just going to make our way back to the garage. It's kind of a good uh, intro into the P&D stuff. Not that I'm a real driver. I'm just kind of showing you stuff that Chuck has showed his viewers. But we also kind of got a nice little detailed look at some of the places in uh, all throughout the Tulsa area. And maybe we can do other videos like that in Oklahoma City and other, other places throughout Oklahoma. So there's the Dow chemical plant up there on the left. But we are headed back in, having already done our deliveries and pickups. So that will be it for today. Thanks for, uh, st as Chuck would say, thanks for stopping by and taking a few minutes out of your time to hang out. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys.